Hi, Jared Krause, host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast. And today we're speaking with John Gilham from Content Refine and Motion Invest. In this episode, we talk about the best way to grow a content website after you've purchased it. We dive into which tools you should be using for just creating content and also upgrading content, which tools you should you be using and why those specific tools. We also talk about how to upgrade your content to be the best piece of content on the web for that certain topic. So how you do this is, is getting certain set of ingredients and we talk about how to get those ingredients so you can upgrade your content and then how to get those ingredients and to put them into a certain method of how to put it all together, which is what we talk about. So your consumers will actually go away and read that article, consume that content, actually love it and come back. And we talk about why this is actually an art and how to perfect that art and get better and better and better of creating great art and great content to ensure that you have a great content website that people actually love and want to come back to and get great value out of. Now, at the end of this episode, John and I have a very special thing that we're going to give you guys is we're going to launch a competition. And this competition has an awesome prize, which we're going to talk about at the end of the episode. And we're also going to discuss how you can enter this competition as well. So stick around all the way to the end of the episode and listen in, get a lot of value bombs, write them down, and then enter this competition. And I'll talk to you soon. Today's episode is brought to you by Investors Club. Investors Club is a marketplace for serious buyers interested in proven businesses that aren't listed anywhere else. There is a free membership where you can get access to 14-day-old listings and can purchase due diligence reports for $47 each. Or if you become a paid member, you can get instant access to every single listing, unlimited due diligence reports, no fee escrow services, access to exclusive offers from Investor Club partners, and priority support. Now, sellers do sign a two-month exclusivity agreement to only list with Investors Club. There are no purchase fees or commission, meaning the seller nor the buyer ever pay commission in any deal. And every due diligence report provides next level metrics to make sure due diligence is far less time consuming, making it quicker for you to seal the deal. Also, Investors Club have a great Q&A support available both for buyers and sellers. I'm a full member myself personally, and a lot of thought and effort has gone into this service. However, there are a limited amount of seats for this membership, so go and check them out at that URL, investors.club. That is investors.club. Hey, John, and we're back. Another episode. Yeah, Jared, happy, happy to be back. And yeah, good to, good to chat with you always in your community. Yeah, likewise. It's good to connect. We've already had a, a great chat prior to hitting the record buttons. And we've just been nutting out some pretty exciting stuff, a bit of a contest that we're going we're gonna to run, which we will speak to at the end of the episode. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited to announce that. And now, like in this podcast episode, I want to really dig into content. You know, so many of the people who are buying websites are buying content websites, especially in my community. And when they come in, I have a bunch of different trainings once I bought a content website on how to grow it and how to, you know, scale that content and all that sort of stuff. But I really want to talk to the pro since you've been working with Content Refined. And even prior to that, you've got so much experience in in creating content, upgrading content, optimizing and all that sort of stuff. So you cool to chat about that today? Yeah, no, sounds sounds great. It's such a tiny topic. Yeah, I mean, you can really geek out on it and get into the the science and the new tools, and it's a it's a fun fun topic for sure. Yeah, I, I've been learning a lot about uh, user experience and time on page, and and a lot about how to make sure your content is so good that people just want to stick around and provide them a better experience on your page. Which is, I have no doubt, is that something that you guys are looking at when you're creating content, optimizing content for your clients? Starting from first principles, what we're focused on is you know, Google wants to rank the best, so be the best. And and that really comes down to, depends on the intent, depends on the topics, not always the exact same thing. And so that gets into kind of your point around, you know, what what's the user after? Are they after a video? Are they after an image? Are they after a tool? What's what's the, are they after a step-by-step -step guide? What will best serve the the user with given, given a certain search group? And that's kind of where we start from with everything from a sort of a first principle standpoint for, for content marketing. Yeah. So kind of knowing your niche, knowing how, I think this is something that I teach in one of the lessons is before you create any content, 
know how that your audience actually consumes that content and which way they prefer to consume that content. Because sometimes if you're like me, I don't like reading 5,000 word blog posts. I hate it. I like to consume podcasts or listen to videos or watch videos. And then you've got other people say, you know, we're talking about content sites. A lot of them are affiliate sites. Some people don't want to be you know, reading through every single description of different, the 10 best products. They just want to see that comparison table. So what's, what are they actually wanting? So I guess that's a, is that a part of your criteria when you're, when you first start working with a website owner? Yeah. So with, with, with content refining, you know, the, the, I'm going to start with some of the background of it, of where that came from, but that was like, you know, a lot of your audience, a lot of the sites online, content-based websites was my kind of primary site in my portfolio affiliate earning or display ads. And then sort of from that system, I spun out Content Refine, which is basically just sort of my team system, which is now scaled over the years to now bring on clients and do content for them. Um, when, we're, when we start working with a client, we look for the search intent keywords that content will perform well for. So yeah, that's definitely, you know, to answer the question, definitely kind of one of the, the initial topics that we review is, you know, what, what, what topics are best served through the type of content that we produce, which is which is written content, you know, at whatever length it needs to be to cover that topic off well. If there's something that a video would perform better on, you know, that's we'll educate them, but that's not where where our specialty lies. Say somebody buys a new website, John, and they're like, all right, cool. I want to, it's a content website and they want to scale it and they just want to put a lot of time and resources into making sure that they can grow that site. And and you know increase increase rankings on either a blog post or an article that already exists or create new content. Let's stick with the creation. It's so hard though, isn't it? Like to cover both in such a short time. Let's instead stick with upgrading existing content. Where would somebody where would somebody start? For example, my audience they they go all right, cool. I bought a site. There's so many posts. Like which one should I start with and why? And I'm always referring to like optimize, you know, what's working and make it even better, like your top three pages. So say they've got their top three pages, where do they start from there? Like, where do you go? Yeah. So most traffic pages is a, is a great place to start. Another place to start is to look at which pages are in, in search console are getting a lot of impressions, but not as many clicks. And that usually is an indicator of ranking either lower on the first page where you're getting seen but not clicked on. And so that's a great indicator of kind of ranking in that sort of bottom of page one is a, is a good spot. And then in SEM rush or other tools, looking at where the main keyword for a reasonably traffic page on your site is sort of, again, bottom of page one, top of page two, because those are the ones where an incremental improvement is going to provide a lot of value. If you've got, you know, a high rank page, but you're ranking one for all the target keywords, upgrading that isn't going to result in the same return. So, you know, once you've got your list of where, where to look to, to sort of which articles would give you the biggest bang for your buck to, to do an update or upgrade to, then that, that's when we bring in some powerful tools. So Surf for SEO is one that's been pretty popular over the last kind of year and a half, couple of years. Market Muse is the one that we used. We did a bit of an analysis looking at all the different tools. So Page Optimizer Pro, Surfer SEO and Market Muse. We did have like bought all three, did a head-to-head -head comparison. And what these tools do is they're correlation SEO, it's called, where they look at what's already performing well in Google and how does your article compare to that and what are the gaps that you need to fill to make your article be as good as, as them. And so that's really kind of the next step along the process of identify which ones will give you the biggest bang for your buck plug them into these tools that help tell you where your content has a gap and then intelligently close that gap to, to meet the, the intent of the search. Yeah, I've actually spoken to, we've had already server SEO on, so we've had Michael and then we're also, yep. Jeff Coyle's coming on from Market News okay. very soon, which will be cool to chat to Right him. on, tell, tell uh, Jeff, Jeff and I have a challenge. His tool's awesome, a little expensive. Let him, let him know <laughs> that I, I said that. I'll have to point him to this episode. It is a great tool. It's it's used by everybody that wants to do well with co their content is using the, these top tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs, Market Muse, and Surfer SEO. They're the they're the probably key ones, right? 
So yeah, I mean, you, you can go kind of about like market news or surfer. They they kind of have a similar benefit and similar to SEM merchant Ahrefs. Those have some duplication. We end up, you know, we, we take it to an extreme, and so we end up having a subscription to all of them. But uh, yeah, you can usually get away with one of the two or one of the other two. Yeah, which is well worth it when you've got servicing so many clients. It's a tool that allows you to give the best product. And we've done some work together and you guys have done some some great stuff for us at, at Bob. So thank you for that. But let's get back to the crux of this this content. You've We go away, we work out, all right, what keywords are under ranking that can get ranked? And you know we can see that there's room to scale. So there's room for that content to scale. And then we also use, the, use these tools like we just mentioned to look at the competition and see what they're doing that we're not. And then asking ourselves the question of what do I need to do to optimize or upgrade this piece of content to make it far better than that? And more likely what I like to say and tell my clients is like, how do I make this content the best piece of content for that topic on the whole web how do you get the answers to that like is, is it through these tools that you go all right cool this has a certain word count that we need and these are the certain keywords throughout the post that we need what other things and metrics and answers should we be getting to make it the best piece of content for that particular topic yeah and, and so those tools are definitely the Call it like the, you know, if you're cooking one of these, like, you know, imagine that you're kind of baking, you're cooking one of these articles. That That's the secret. Like, that's the recipe. These tools provide the recipe. But, you know, pick, pick some fancy dish, give me the recipe, and it's going to turn out to be a disaster. The art level, kind of the that sort of like the skill level comes in, in understanding, getting deep into the, into understanding the audience, what the intent of is, and then really kind of having different types of articles to create given that search intent. And so if it's a product review article that people are after and that's really the intent, then the structure for that article, and I think you know we were talking about it beforehand, people want to consume that information in different formats. Some people want a table view that compares the features. Some people want a wants to see which ones are the most popular and provide it and include some social proof around which ones were the most popular. And so kind of the core of like getting that recipe is where you get it from those tools. But then the sort of where it passes from the science and turns into a bit of an art is having a whole bunch of sort of, I don't call them templates, but sort of like mental heuristics of what an article should look like given the a certain intent and the, the topic. And then trying to create the article that will best meet the intent of your target audience and that's where yeah it passes from the guy that doesn't know what he's doing in the kitchen to the the master chef pulling off yeah. something that's you know delicious and beautiful i think that's such a great explanation for for creating content like you can use these you can say use these tools to get the ingredient list and you've also got the image of what that cake looks like or that delicious yeah. meal looks like but the secret source really and this this the secret part of this is in the method of of how it's done to ensure that you get this masterpiece of content or dish or cake and that's what most people don't know is the method and that's what you guys have you know over time tested measured obviously some failures along the way to be able to get to the point where you're like now this works like a tuned race car that works yeah. quite well right so what are some of the tips you would have in, for some people in like taking those ingredients and those metrics and things and sort of like trying to put that into their own method to ensure that they're not you know create a pile of mush yeah and that a pile of mush is, is great you know to keep, to keep this analogy going but yeah the, the the pile of mush is what i think a lot of content can be described as if mm. there isn't an intelligent framework attached to it and so where where we like to start, and you know, this is co content refined was in part started selfishly on it for me because I wanted like I wanted to get world class within my own set of portfolio sites at producing content, and the more that I could achieve scale for others, the more that I could use that team for for my own sites, and that that's what we continue to do. And so the the sort of where, how do we get the method to create the framework that results in a well structured piece and not just mush? And you know, some of the tips that I would say are look at competitors and, and look at articles that you have a 
seeing that you've appreciated, especially if you are the target audience for your, your site. If you're not the target audience, that's a little bit harder. Optimally, you're, you are the part of the target audience for your site. And if you know what has resonated with you, it will likely resonate with others if that's been structured in a certain way. And so if it's a, whatever format that you are seeing that you're, that you're liking, if it's like, hey, video early on, plus then like a, a cheat sheet at the end, that's an infographic that is just sort of a, a very abbreviated version that I can now print or copy and, and have the information that I got from that post. And so looking at, looking at competitors, what, what's been well received for yourself. And then, you know, the, the big piece is turning that all into a style guide and standardizing that approach. I think that's mm -hmm. where, you know, you can get some really inconsistencies in content when you have sort of, you know, just send it off to a writer, writer, keyword, and that's it. Send me back whatever you write. And it's like, oh, that's all over the map, totally different. This person went on like a political left turn and this is just not, no, this is just no good. Yeah. That's yeah. like paying for a pile of mush. The worst thing is like creating it yourself and then paying somebody else to create a pile of mush, right? Yeah. So to, to ensure it's not the pile of mush, figure out what you like, figure out what your audience wants. Ideally looking at, you know, the big dogs in your niche, they probably mm -hmm. got some idea of figuring it out and then putting your own spin on it and then turning that into a, into a guide that will ensure that the articles that get produced follow that's, that's consistent framework. I love that. I love that explanation so greatly that I don't know if everybody listening actually picked up on what the keyword was that you said, but for me, I found the keyword was resonate. And you said, you know, as long as that resonates and I feel it really does need to resonate with the audience in how they like, like I said in earlier on in this episode is like how they like to consume that content and what, what they actually grab on and connect to in that piece of content. Like you said, if you're going to go away and, and pay a content writer, just slap some keywords, you've done some Ahrefs or SEMrush keyword research, give them, the, give them that and the title. They can go away and create that, but you're going to get back something that may not actually connect and grab the user that allows them or puts them in a position where they feel they want to stay on the site and they want to keep reading and they want to read another article. And how I'm going to give you a bit of a story and how I do this myself with my content is I'm not a huge content writer, which is why I've worked with you guys to like upgrade some of the content for me. But I love podcasting and I like to believe that I'm, I'm decent at podcasting, but it's a skill that I am not just jumping on the microphone and just having a chat is I like to go away and listen to other podcasts and see what they do really well. For example, to connect with my audience really well is like, I like to tell stories like I'm doing now. So, and then I like to share other things within my podcast that connect with the audience because that's what connects them to, you know, the experience of liking and listening and getting great information from the podcast. So there's so many different things that I go away and look at, which is the psychology of the experience that the user has for the content that we're creating. And I think that you just absolutely nailed it with the word resonate because it's hard to really explain to somebody without research and understanding your audience what type of content to create that's going to have the best impact for the audience or the best value for the audience, right? Yeah. Very well said. And yeah, it's like the exact process that you described, you know, for your form of content being podcast is analogous to the, you know, the, the same format with, with written content of going away, what resonates, what fits and creating. So that, that's awesome. I noticed when I used to, I started out travel blogging and just, I sucked at writing stories. <laughs> and so what I did is I, I worked out like what were these best travel bloggers doing when they're creating their content. And this is pure text. What are they doing to create, you know, such good pieces of content that people want to just read their blog, even if they're not going to go to visit that, that country or that location, they just yep. want to, they just want to read it. And I looked in deeper to their content and realized that they weren't just typing something of like, and then I did this and then I did that and then I did this and it was cool because of this, but they wrapped it into an awesome journey and an awesome story. And they, they wrote that content out as though they were telling the story verbally. So they wrote the, they typed the content out as though they were speaking it. Whereas sometimes people have their content 
so like political jargon and like really strong word after word after word. And that may be good for people that are reading a news article, but maybe not your content site when you're trying to sell say guitars or something like that. Yeah. A few of the things that like the, the readability score being, being kind of in the right kind of grade level is so important. You know, it lists sort of some of the very common mistakes that people make, you know, massive blocks of text. No one likes that. Like even mm. if it's even if it's not a grammatically perfect location for a paragraph, two or three lines per paragraph, it just makes it so much more readable. Subheadings, you know, all all that good stuff just makes it so much more consumable than when it's just one giant block or that uses big words. No one can get through that. I'm laughing here. I'm <laughs> laughing here because I just go sometimes when I go to a site, I just like look at this wall of text and I'm like, you have lost me in literally microseconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm capable of reading this, but I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it's quite an art to it. And I really appreciate the work that you guys do. And we're going to help the listeners out with, with some of what you do as well. We're going to have a competition, which I'm really excited for. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to explain to the audience, John, on what you need to do to enter the competition. And then I'm going to hand the mic over to you to tell us a little bit about what they are going to win. So to enter this, I'm Bob, right? Buying online businesses and content refiner can do a bit of competition together. There's going to be a prize, which John's going to talk about, but to enter, there's going to be a, a few different things that you can do. So it's going to be based off a point system. One, you know, you can put your email in Two, you can like, and share this three, there's going to be other things that you can do, share this with a certain amount of people, all that sort of stuff, which will be a point system going towards the grand prize. So there will be a link in the show notes. I'll be putting this out by email and all that sort of stuff. So people could be at be able to get the link it should be everywhere to enter but what are what are they going to win john what have we got for them? yeah so I'll build up with you know buy and sell a bunch of content sites you yeah know, especially with uh with let's say at motion invest where we where we do that and what we're going to do the easiest way to grow a content site once you buy one is to identify those low-hanging fruits update, upgrade them and get an immediate lift. You know, we've repeatedly had success with that. It's what we always kind of recommend is what clients see a ton of success with. And so what we're going to do with, uh, with your audience is give away $250 package of content upgrades that anyone can apply to a, to a site that they have now or a site that, you know, with, with the help of, of Jared, you're going to be purchasing shortly. So that, that's the, that's the giveaway. And, you know, we, we are always excited by, and the lift that that can demonstrate and yeah, happy to be giving that away uh, as a, as a package with the, with your audience here. Well, we're super excited. I know that some of the, some of my clients that have just bought businesses, like I was just saying to you earlier, you know, we've had an amazing month just coming out of this COVID stuff where, you know, we've had more people buy businesses than we may have ever have bought in a single month. And yeah, there's some, some content site owners over the last sort of couple of months buying businesses that are going to be jumping out of their skin for this. So if you own a content website or you're very close to owning a content website or maybe even not just a content website, but like maybe a site where you have content on it that can be monetized in a different way that Content Refined and John and the team can help you from Content Refined are certainly recommend entering this competition because it's absolutely a delight to work with you guys it was the touch points were very simple the work got done so much quicker than i perceived it would and thank you for that and yeah i'm excited to see a winner it's been yeah good working with uh you know we you know we did some some updates with uh with jared and excited to see how those continue to perform and uh yeah it's, it's a smooth smooth simple process so it's been a it's been a great a great kind of product offering that's resonated with especially safe buyers yeah. And thank you so much. So uh, where can everybody find out more about you, John? If you know, a lot of people are going to go away and, and check out the competition, but if they want to just come to you directly, like let's talk about, you know, a few different touch points with motion and, and content refine and where's the best place to go for those things. Yeah. So I, I kind of got a handful of things on the go and where I talk about what I, what I do online is at websiteincome.com. And then I've got a portfolio of, of service businesses that, that sort of fit my own needs within my portfolio and then help out others. So content marketing at contentrefine.com. And then we buy and sell usually smaller content sites that we buy ourselves at motioninvest.com. 
so many things going on in this space and uh, a lot of it's wrapped around content sites, buying and scaling and growing. So John, it's great to have you on again as a second time. Everybody, there's going to be links to all of those places, those three links in the show notes. The most important one is the competition link that you'll see. So go away and check that out. Thanks again, John. And yeah, we'll speak to you soon. Awesome. Great to, great to be on again. Thanks, Jared. Thank you.